I don't know what to do with my hands. I would just grab my stomach. <laughs> Hey Apartment Therapy, welcome to my 280 square foot studio in New York City. So a love of home decor has been with me since a young age. We used to have family nights where we would just watch like home improvement shows like Extreme Makeover Home Edition. My eight year old self was like, move that bus. Like I loved seeing transformations where you go from having like a simple space that really doesn't have much to it and then to this big reveal that's like wow and I chase that feeling that thrill of like the after um, every day in this apartment I'm constantly changing things and moving them out I think when I first walked into my space. I had the keys in my hand. I was like, you did it. You got a studio apartment in New York City. I was greeted by these yellowish white walls. We actually put um, marble from one end of the apartment and it rolled <laughs> all the way down to the other side. And I was like, what did you just do, you know? So I'm from Miami. I come from a big, loud Cuban family and I live by myself in New York City. So I definitely wanted to bring a little bit of that culture and that home into my studio. I've been spending a lot more time at home lately than I originally thought I would when I got this apartment. So I've really had to make living in a small space work. This is my main space and my bed is here and I do sleep here, but it's also a yoga studio and a movie theater and a recording studio. <laughs> like the possibilities are endless. I think one of the hardest parts of making a space your own is that you really have to know yourself really well. You have to ask yourself the questions, you have to go places and think about how certain patterns make you feel. And it's a learning curve, don't get me wrong. Like I, in college, had light purple walls and a bright yellow comforter with birds on it. And I quickly learned that that wasn't it for me. And it wasn't until like a lot of trial and error after that where I tried white bedding and I was like, okay, you know, having a, a plain base that you can change so many things around is really helpful. I think for me, keeping a palette that's neutral is important because I do love chotskis and little things so much that with loud colors, it's hard for that to also become a little too cluttered. My TV stand is one of my favorite pieces in the apartment. It's actually one of the first ones that I got. It is the Mary Poppins bag of TV stands. I can fit a ton in there. It's not only really nice to look at, but it also fits a lot too. I'd say my kitchen was one of the most frustrating points for me. So I decided to take off the cabinet doors in a portion of my kitchen and immediately it just opened up the whole space and brought so much character in. And I actually keep the doors under my bed. So if my super ever comes to fix something, we have easy access to put them right back on. You do not need a huge budget or a giant home in order to make a place your own. And then I think the biggest thing when moving to a studio or a small space is to just like purge, purge. Like you have to go through everything you own. Twice a year, I dump everything out, like of my closets, of my drawers, everything. And I look at it to really visualize what I own. And it really helps you keep track of what you have and figure out where you can put everything and kind of start from scratch instead of having an overwhelming pile of things. You can chop that pile in half and that's a better way to start. Home to me is somewhere where you can be completely yourself where you're surrounded by things that make you the happiest and surrounded by things that you love. You know, I live alone, but I am not alone. <laughs> um, I surround myself with pictures of my family, with different stories, you know, like even this frame. I walked 10 blocks in the snow with my friend Amanda to bring that frame home. So whenever I look at it, like I'm not by myself, it's something that brings me joy and makes me happy in my space. And I think that if you're able to accomplish that feeling that you are surrounded by love and warmth inside of a place that you live, then that's a home that you want to be in. 
New York City is beautiful, but it's hard. <laughs> and the apartments are small, and the floors are crooked, and there are a lot of flaws, but don't let that overwhelm you. You will be able to take your space and make it your own and wake up every day somewhere that you love. you're proud to call home. <laughs> Hola Apartment Therapy, I'm Manu, this is Frida. And I'm Javi and this is Flap. And welcome to our 860 square feet apartment here in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Come in, take a look. Before running into this apartment, we had seen like 10 different apartments maybe. So we were like looking, looking, looking. All of a sudden, it was on a Sunday. We, we saw it, we were in love with it. I feel it and he felt it too. These were the places uh, we were want to stay mostly forever. Here in uh, Argentina, uh, specifically in Buenos Aires, the architecture style is really European. Like one small living dining room, one small bedroom, another small bedroom, a small kitchen, and we decided to integrate most spaces as we could. So we tore down the walls from the other bedroom and the kitchen and make a whole big space. Our biggest challenge was budgets. Everything we wanted, it costed so much money. We're like, we cannot hire anybody for this money. And we started looking for the ways to make it ourselves. We started Googling how to break down a wall, break down a hallway, electricity, be careful of like not having the ceiling coming down on us. So that was the first challenge, breaking down the walls. Then like these pieces of furniture that were like so expensive with the wood and iron. So we started buying all the elements separately and we put them all together. The same as the planters outside for the for the plants. You know, when you go to a place for a first time or like visit another country and you're in love with something, I don't know, you go over, over to, I don't know, Mexico. Yeah. And you like, like something... all those those like strong colors they have. And we, we just made the, the painting with, with the cacti. We were like, we want that Mexico spirit somewhere in our place. We went to, to Greece. All the buildings were like so white. And we started talking to a guy and we were like, how you make it so white? And he's like, we paint it every three months. And I'm like, that's right. If you want a concept, you need to work for it. We paint the terrace, the white terrace, at least three times a year. Then we paint the floor two to three times a year too, to keep it refreshed. So that gives you an, an extra energy, an extra impact. Our favorite item in the house from all the items we have here uh, definitely will be the red stove. We had it in mind for so long. For us, it represented the heart of the house, the warmth, the old way of cooking with the fire. One item that we are also really proud of, it's our big table. We wanted this wood table but it was like really expensive and going back to the DIYs I found these old pieces of wood at my grandfather's house and my uncle is a carpenter so he helped me with it right now it's set for six people yeah but you can definitely fit ten people squeezed Please. but that's what we wanted my biggest indulgence would be the plants and the pots we are kind of anxious people living in the city going here going there but then you come back home you cannot rush a plant you have to let it grow to its tempo they represent the natural path of the things i mean if it's a small 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 space make sure you're making the most of it like every wall if this is a four wall space it doesn't mean it's just a one space. Every wall can have its character, ha can have a, a color, a texture, a pattern. And now that we are running out of projects, we have some of them left. Yeah. We're like, what we're gonna do after we're done? And we are starting to ask our friends if they need any help with any project. <laughs> yeah. 
like setting up shelves, uh, mirrors. Yeah. Do you need a hand with anything in your home? So after being away, coming back home, it really feels nice having the dogs, having the plants, having like those things that the, the shampoo you love, that hand cream you, you love, you know, having your things that you, you could have replacements everywhere else, but there's nothing like what's yours, you know, as Dorothy said, <laughs> there's no place like home. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Gracias Apartment Therapy for coming over. We hope you enjoyed the tour and we'll see you soon. Thank you again to all those that voted for us and feel free to come in whenever. Hasta la próxima. Bye. Ciao, ciao. She sneezed. <laughs> Hi Apartment Therapy. My name is Monique. And I'm Aswan. And welcome to our 248 square foot tiny house in Melbourne, Australia. This house for us is a step in the right direction. It represents how we want to live our lives. Coming out of university and realizing that I'd been set up to work for the next like 40 years of my life just to be able to afford a house. It just wasn't the life that we wanted. So that's why we, we looked at alternatives and we came to the idea of building a tiny house. So this has been a way of living a bit smaller, but having the time to, you know, take a couple of days off on Monday, Tuesday. We both work part time so we can go adventuring, road tripping, just enjoy life while we're young and healthy and yeah, but still also has set us up for the future that we own our own home already and, and but, but also not sacrificing quality of life, like it still works beautifully. It's the best place we've ever lived in. Living small has made our lives a lot richer and a lot bigger in many ways. I think the biggest challenge for us is probably designing the space because so we designed it all ourselves which took us probably six months just making sure we had it all figured out and because it's such a small space every little detail really affects all the other things like you know just a window positioning and getting that all right from the start was really important for us and then the build part of it. So we ordered our trailer and then when that arrived we just started building. Walls, roof, all the cladding. Yeah, so the overall build took us eight months including like we made all custom furniture for it which I think really helps with small spaces having furniture that's designed for that space it makes it feel so much bigger. The couch fits all the way to the walls and you just get all that extra room, all the built-in storage. We've got a full-size shower which is really nice 1200 by 900 and then we've got yeah dish dishwasher washing machine dryer fridge full-size stove and oven and then yeah hot water gas all those kind of things the favorite element inside the house is probably this sofa area so where we're sitting now this converts into a booth seat that can seat six people for dinner so when we have friends over, it's really handy, but it also converts into a queen size bed as well. If we ever have guests over who need to stay the night. So yeah, this is definitely my favorite area. And mine too. <laughs> <laughs> In a tiny house, space is one of the most important things because you don't have a lot of it. And so you kind of want to make this feeling of space. So when you come into our house, we've purposefully made this end a little bit lower which makes you kind of feel like you've got more space because the ceiling goes up. And then we've also got quite big windows on each side to bring in a lot of light. And then also under our loft, which is probably the darkest spot in our house, we've put a big mirror on the back of the door so that when you look into an area that should be dark, it's not because it has a mirror that reflects. Home to us, it means so much to us, this tiny house. If you start to think about what is important in your life and how you want your life to go, I think you can achieve that by living more simply and letting go of the things that you don't actually enjoy doing and just really tailor your life to how you want it to be and, and what you will enjoy. Hi, I'm Michelle. Welcome to our apartment in Temescal in Oakland, California. 
We live in 590 square feet. Let me do that again. <laughs> As a landscape designer and someone who loves the natural world, I'm, I'm really inspired by that. I love light, I love texture, I love natural colors, I love kind of the warmth and coziness of laying on a hot rock in the sun, and also like the humbling part of jumping into water, into the ocean and feeling really small. I'm Antonio, Michelle's partner. When Michelle and her mom were looking for a project, we visited this space. I can only really describe it as like a nightmare, right? The walls are open, the electrical's open, the floor is covered in shag rug carpet. And when we came in, I thought, this is definitely not at all. We cannot live here. Nobody can live here. I don't even know where you would start. But Michelle had the ability to look through those open walls and the open electrical and the dust and the terrible paint. She knew exactly what this apartment could be just by looking at the raw materials. If this was a movie, it would have had that swelling orchestral music and like the, <laughs> like the, the zoom in, zoom out effect that, that showed the space and things aligning and, and lighting up. And for me, I was just looking at a construction zone. I was like, what are, what, why are we here? Let me reintroduce you to my <laughs> biggest fan. Yeah, I totally am. And while we were standing on that deck, looking at this place, Michelle's eyes got that look that I'm very accustomed to, which is like the freight train is leaving and she turned to me and she was like, this is it. This is the place, this is the building, this is the project. I wanna work on this. To modernize the space, we actually changed where the old kitchen was, which is the room behind me here. So this, it was a kitchen and a breakfast nook. These were commuter apartments. So you had a full-size living room, a full-size dining room, and then like kind of a small weird kitchen and a breakfast nook. And then you pulled a Murphy bed down in your living room and slept there. So what we did when we were adjusting the space and looking at the plan is actually we decided to put the fridge in the Murphy bed. That was an awesome solution that allowed us to really maximize and make a really big kitchen that felt like it was always here. Clearly in our space, our biggest challenge for us is storage. We have so many objects and so many hobbies. Please do not open any drawers or cabinets. The pantry is our only closet in the apartment, so it was really important when we were designing the space that we maximized all the storage we could. We measured the heights of cans, my favorite olive oil, sauces, pea boxes, and then designed a shelf unit that would fit all those items perfectly. Because of our living room and it literally having access points at almost every wall, we don't really have room for a TV. So our solution to that was to get a projector. So we have the screen that drops down in front of our front door, which is uh, creates all sorts of problems when people want to come over while we're watching the debates or a big game or something like that. It's kind of a... <laughs> Part of why I've been drawn to landscape in general is that it is this interesting medium with design where in a lot of ways you don't have control. You can say, oh, this plant would look excellent in this corner. I really want a multi-trunk tree with broad leaves and you know, you can kind of pick but the reality is, it's nature. Like, you don't actually have control. You can make informed decisions, but that's kind of the beauty of it too, because there's surprise. It's so fun to visit gardens every time of year. That's why I think I never get bored, even in my own garden, like watching things pop up, and oh my god, I, the honeysuckle's blooming like crazy this year, like no other year before. And so there's something about this element of surprise, and then also the element of just not being in control. I think there's something, how do I want to say that, humbled? I think of our space as kind of an ever-changing canvas. I grew up in a house where my mom's motto was basically, bring a box to the thrift store, take a box home. I like to embody that in my space. I think I'm ever-changing and my style's ever-changing and there's gonna be things that come and go and styles come and go 
And that's the same with a garden. Plants are gonna change and they're gonna be um, dynamic and interesting. And, and as your, your trees get taller, you have a shadier garden and how do you adjust and change for that? And the same thing happens when you're a human growing up and living your life and meeting new people and going to new places. Like you will pick up influences and change your style. And that's okay, just be ready and be flexible for that. And I, I feel like our apartment kind of embodies that in a way because things are always changing. All right. <laughs> Let me make sure I'm recording again. Okay, we're good, we're recording. <laughs>